as astronaut Russell Schweikert, apparently fully recovered from yesterday's nausea, was able to take a spacewalk after all. The spacewalk, canceled by space officials yesterday when it appeared Schweiker wasn't up to the strenuous task, was an abbreviated one, but a success nevertheless. David Schumacher reports from CBS News Space Headquarters in New York. The spacewalk may not have been necessary, as officials insisted when they canceled it, but it sure was fun when they did it. In every mission, there seems to be a psychological moment when the natural concerns over spaceflight pass and the astronauts relax and enjoy themselves. That moment came this morning when Rusty Schweikert stepped out of the limb, took a few minutes to get comfortable here on the front porch, and then moved partway up the handrails toward the command module. As you'll hear, the red-haired Schweikert, who has picked up the additional nickname of Red Rover, is feeling fine. television pass over the southern United States. Astronaut Schweikert on the left and McDivitt pointing their camera inside and outside the lens. Hey, Red Rover, we, uh, how about a big smile for the folks at home here and uh, let us know that you're feeling pretty good after that show. Yeah, we're feeling great as a matter of fact. <laughs> McDivitt doesn't look so good, but he feels all right. Well, uh, that was the typical friendly CDR smile. Right. They don't like it because I've got a better beard than they do. Straight teeth but a crooked smile. Hey, that, that picture's fantastic. Uh, Dave, let's just hold it. I mean, Jim, let's hold it right there for a while. Uh, that's really a terrific shot, uh, Jim. Uh, we're getting the earth in the background and the, uh, the clearness of the command module is outstanding. It's a clear command module. All right. Spider, this is Houston. Do we still have you uh, in voice here? Sure do. Uh, 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 I'm just kind of busy here. That's why we're not talking. Okay, I understand. What we're doing is we're filling up. We're recharging the flip. And I'm eating my lunch. Yeah, the commander is uh, talking while he's eating. He's not supposed to do that. There has been fun and, undeniably, more than a touch of show business in all this, but the astronauts along the way have checked out a number of things important to the lunar mission. Spacesuits, backpacks, and the lunar lander itself. Tomorrow, the most critical test of all, the solo flight and re-rendezvous of the LEM. It's not something they can practice. It must work. David Schumacher, CBS News, Space Headquarters, New York. Apollo 9 astronaut Russell Schweikert took his walk in space today after all. It was canceled yesterday because Schweikert had been ill, but when he said he felt better today, space officials told him to go ahead. He spent 40 minutes on a platform outside the lunar module during various exercises. He was to have used handrails to go to the command ship and back, but that was called off. 
As he stepped into space, Schweikert said, oh boy, what a view. This is how he described the effect of the sun on his spacesuit. Ooh, that sun's really bright. Uh, Houston, this is Red Rover. If you're reading on just going to call you in a blind here. The uh, suit's very comfortable. Uh, I'm on min cooling, and I haven't had any problem at all. Uh, the only thing that's warm at all are my hands, and they're just uh, barely warm. They're not really hot at all. One orbit later, astronauts Schweikert and McDivitt transmitted pictures from the lunar module known as Spider. The command module is called Gumdrop. Schweikert talked to Mission Control about his spacewalk. Uh, Houston, Spider. Go ahead, Spider. Uh, Roger, uh, we wondered, uh, going over the state side there on uh, the EVA, did you read us all the way? Uh, we noticed that uh, you didn't say anything, even when we asked questions. Uh, we were reading everything, uh, all of you, loud and clear, uh, and uh, we just weren't getting up to you, but the comm from you was terrific. Uh, we read all your conversations, sound like you were really having a ball. Yeah, it's a pretty good view from out there. That's what you call a view from the top of the stairs, the limb stairs, that is. The astronauts then asked Houston about what might be in store for them tomorrow. Have you got any words of wisdom on tomorrow's flight plan yet, Smokey? Uh, Rod, uh, we'll uh, cover that uh, with you later if you want. Uh, we'll settle down. And uh, if you've got anything that you can give us uh, along, the, along the line about clearing the tunnel, it sounds like that goes pretty well. Yeah, the tunnel doesn't take long at all. It's getting ready to clear the tunnel. The tunnel referred to by the astronauts during that transmission is the passage between the two modules. Okay, and uh, hey, Red Rover, we uh, how about a big smile for the folks at home here, and then uh, let us know that you're feeling pretty good after that show. Yeah, we're feeling great, as a matter of fact. McDivitt doesn't look so good, but he feels all right. Then Schweigert and McDivitt turned their camera toward Earth and the command module. Uh, that's really a terrific shot, uh, Jim. Uh, we're getting the Earth in the background, and the uh, the clearness of the command module is outstanding. Schweigert and McDivitt made another unscheduled trip through the tunnel from the command module to the lunar module tonight. They were sent in to turn over a guidance unit that was overheating. Apollo 9's rookie astronaut, Russell Schweikert, climbed out of the spacecraft today to perform a limited version of the on-again, off-again spacewalk. It was the fourth day of the flight of Apollo 9, and it included spectacular live television pictures from the lunar module. ABC science editor Jules Bergman reports. The spacewalk, reinstated at the last minute, saw Schweikert emerge on the lunar bug's front porch. Wearing the moon life support backpack, he reported there were now three spaceships up there. Apollo 9 or Gumdrop, the lunar module or Spider, and Red Rover, the red-haired Rusty Schweikert himself. After taking pictures of both spacecraft, Schweikert went back in the LEM, and he and McDivitt got out the portable TV camera to begin their second telecast from the two dock spacecraft. Then the 15-minute show got underway, with Rusty Schweikert himself handling most of the narration from the two spacecraft. Yeah, it's a pretty good view from out there. That's what you call a view from the top of the stairs, the limb stairs, that is. Here's the Apollo command module now, as viewed from the lunar bug. Hey, that's really great, uh, Spider and Gumdrop. Uh, it's really beautiful, and we can see you uh, waving, Dave. Oh, that, that camera is, picks up pretty well, even when you're moving it fast, and that's a beautiful shot of the, uh, the quad now, uh, Jim. Here's a picture of the radiation meter. So far, we haven't detected any radiation. Oh, very good. Hey, that's, hey, that's a real good picture. Uh, that's really a terrific shot, uh, Jim. Uh, we're getting the Earth in the background, and the, uh, the clearness of the command module is outstanding. It's a clear command module. All right. All three astronauts are in good shape tonight, getting rested for tomorrow's critical rendezvous and docking of the lunar bug with Apollo. It's the major goal of their flight. They'll separate from Apollo 9 using the lunar bug's engines, fly 100 miles away, then in a maneuver simulating the bug rendezvousing with Apollo after a lunar liftoff, power themselves back in. 
If the LM's engines fail, Dave Scott, in Apollo 9 itself, will have to power up and rescue them. Apollo 9 orbiting on, headed toward its most dangerous day. This is Jules Bergman reporting. ABC News will broadcast a special progress report on those maneuvers tomorrow at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.